Hi, my name's Daniel. Welcome to episode three of the Almagir.net vlog. This week, we're going to be looking at financial fair play. As a fan of Birmingham City Football Club, it seems there is nothing fair about financial fair play. The FFP rules, or Profit and Sustainability rules as they're known in the Championship, seem to have done little to stop clubs from falling into massive debt and into administration. The only team currently, as of uh, the start of July 2020, to have fallen foul of the PNS rules are one that have paid their bills, Birmingham City Football Club. So, question one, as Mario Balotelli might have said if he'd done the Royal Blue, why always blues? At the time of filming this video, Birmingham City Football Club are currently the only team to have been punished for a breach of the PNS rules. That may change soon as Sheffield Wednesday have recently faced their independent disciplinary commission. And should they be found guilty, then the rumour is they face a massive point deduction as punishment. While the Owls have been charged for a discrepancy in their usage of the sale of stadium loophole that everyone else seems to be using, Blues fell foul of the PS rules for actually much simpler reasons. It's a little bit complex to explain, but the idea with PS is to discourage teams from overspending on transfer fee and wages and not discourage them from spending on things like infrastructure, which are good for the club. So rather than using a simple profit loss result that you might find in the accounts, some things like infrastructure are actually ignored. Now, with PNS in the championship, clubs are not allowed to make a deviation of more than £39 million over a three-year period from zero, a, a PNS result of zero. And Blues were charged because they did. That was predominantly down to the massive spending spree we had in the summer of 2017. Now, Blues then made the situation worse by signing Christian Pedersen during a period they were supposed to be under an embargo. While uh, the signing of Pedersen wasn't punished uh, due to a technicality, I will hand on heart say I believe Blues got away with it. The chief problem Blues have had is that while the owners were happy to splash the cash, it loaded a lot of debt onto Birmingham City. Now, if you look at the last accounts, Birmingham City owed £91 million to Birmingham Sports Holdings in Hong Kong and they needed another 54 million to get through uh, the 18 months to the end of 2020. Now, BSH in the accounts quite openly said that they don't want the money back immediately and the auditors have accepted it and that's all okay. However, as we've seen with Wigan Athletic, if that changes, then everything goes to pieces. Another problem with um, all this is that PNS actually, it doesn't work. So as we've seen the last couple of seasons, clubs have found all kinds of loopholes to get around the rules and just keep spending as much as they want. Now, the effect of that is to make the championship a little bit lopsided, as the teams that are trying to follow the rules and are spending within their means are, in the main, struggling. Additionally, clubs who are relegated from the Premier League uh, come down with the benefit of parachute payments, which means they can spend a lot more on players if they choose to do so. The PNS rules were designed to ensure that clubs didn't go into administration. For a few years, it worked but it was inevitable as wage costs went up and transfer fees went up and average wages in the championship went up, someone was going to fall foul. Someone was going to um, find that they couldn't do it anymore. And that team was Bolton Wanderers last season. Now, Bolton Wanderers have paid a heavy price for that. They, they were relegated last year, uh, started this year with a points deduction, and now they're going to be relegated down to League Two. So two relegations in two years because they couldn't afford to pay their bills. Now, taking Wigan again as an example, they've been reliant on owner funding for as long as I can remember. Um, if you think back to the days of Dave Whelan, who was a Wigan boy born and bred, he loved the club, he put money into it, he kept it going. The club never made any money. And when they were sold to Hong Kong to the International Entertainment Corporation, they continued it. But unfortunately, after IEC ditched it onto Next Leader LP, uh, which is uh, owned by uh, Ao Young YK, he decided he didn't want to pay it anymore and dropped the club into admin without paying any bills. Right now, uh, what we have is the coronavirus outbreak. And what that's done is to magnify the problems that clubs have. Because now there's no money coming in from ticket revenue. There's no money coming in from season ticket revenue. There's no money coming in from commercial revenue. And they're so much more reliant on funds from the owners. Now, in my eyes, that means something has to change. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm just a hairy-ass blogger. I'm not a accountant, a lawyer, whatever else. But I will tell you that I've got an idea that I think will work better. 
and I'm going to share it with you now. Now, first off, we know that owners don't want restrictions on spending. We, we know that the people who've got the money want to spend it and they're going to spend it regardless. They're going to find loopholes to do so. We also know that clubs who don't go mad with wages are finding themselves punished for doing so. So for me, the solution is to, allow, uh, is to have something where the big clubs can spend money if they want to, but those who don't and stay self-sufficient are rewarded for being smart and self-sufficient. As you can see from my hat, my San Francisco Giants hat, I'm a fan of Major League Baseball. And in Major League Baseball in the US, there is something called the luxury tax. Uh, the luxury tax is a figure they give at the start of the season, which is the maximum any club can spend on wages before a tax is applied. It's called the threshold. So if a club goes above the threshold, they're liable for luxury tax. The first year they go above the threshold, uh, they pay 30%. So 30p for every pound they go over, and they pay it into a pool of money. The second successive year they do so, it's 50%. The third, and any year after that, is 100%, so they're paying one pound extra for every pound they're over. Spend, if they spend a year where they don't spend the threshold in wages, then the clock gets reset. Once all that money that is paid in, all this luxury tax is collected, it's then split between every club that didn't break the threshold in the division. So if you've got a club that's coming down from the Premier League, they're not entitled to any of that split because they've got parachute payments, they've got enough money as it is. While clubs that are promoted from League One are entitled to that uh, entitled to that payment if they didn't break the threshold in League One while getting themselves promoted. That way, if an owner like uh, Mr. King or someone else wants to go wild, then they can, but they do so at the risk of enriching their competitors. Now, it's not a full solution; it's just an idea, but it's something that I think helps to move away from a calculation which is shown to be easily circumvented. Next week, um, I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to talk about Blue's Chief Executive Officer, Ren Zhuandong. Um, he's been in the news a lot recently and I want to talk about what his role as CEO entails, about his history in football and why the owners love him so much. And we'll take it from there. Um, so if you would like to see that or you like the videos, please click subscribe. Um, click the little bell as well so you'll be notified whenever I post anything new. Please like the video as well because that helps the algorithm, helps ensure that other people see it. Um, please, please share. Um, so, till next week, keep right on.